Happy belated Valentine's Day. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, got some new video equipment, as you, you can see. Um, you know, or maybe you haven't noticed, but, uh, you know, hopefully you will. Uh, at any rate, you know, I was uh, I wanted to do another video, and I kind of didn't really know what I was going to do, so I walked into into the, the guitar dungeon here, and, and uh, you know, this is really the first guitar that caught my eye that I hadn't re done a review on yet, and, uh, you know, I thought it was still relevant, and, and people might like to learn a little bit about. Um, <clears throat> you know, what we've got is a, uh, this is an Epiphone 1958 reissue Carina Flying V. Um, you know, it, it's you know the this this is essentially a reissue of the original Flying V uh, that Ted McCarty designed back in 1958 when that guitar came out. When it came out then, uh, you know the 58 you know the Flying V along with the Explorer and another guitar that is uh, uh, that a lot of people aren't aware of called the Modern. Uh, that's Modern with an E on the end. Uh, you know they were real pointy and uh, you know oddball shaped guitars. And, you know for 1958 they were pretty far ahead of their time. And you know quite frankly the world just wasn't ready for them. Uh, you know so they uh, they kind of you know put put everything on hold and brought them back out several years down the road. And uh, lo and behold you know Flying V is is one of the uh, the you know the iconic Gibson models out there still today. <coughs> uh, which is why they continue to build reissues of the first year they were made. Uh, you can always tell the difference between the uh, the 58 reissues and the standard Flying V's because there's no stop tail piece. Uh, you know, it's got that weird V uh, that V shaped uh, metal plate there instead. And you know, as you can see by the six holes there on the back, this is actually a string through body uh, model as opposed to a, a, a typical Gibson stop tail. Uh, the other couple of other things on it, the uh, the cutaways. Uh, where the neck meets the body, these are much, much wider, and uh, the actual angle of the V itself is wider. You know, when you compare it to what a regular, uh, you know, a non-reissue flying V, which is what this is, uh, looks like, you know, you can see this has got the stop tail piece, it's a little bit thinner body V, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, so those are the main differences. And the other thing that they did, back you know when they first came out with this guitar they realized that they were not very comfortable to play and they tend to slide off your leg and in doing so um, you know to try to prevent that they came they uh, they put in this you know basically it's a rough rubber tread strip uh, you know in an attempt to uh, to help it stabilize a little bit better, a little bit better on your leg so you can sit down and play it and uh, uh, you know it, it's it does help you know I don't know that it's a full that it's foolproof but you know it certainly does help <coughs> um, you know this guitar has uh, you know two two volume two master volume knobs neck volume bridge volume and a master tone uh, three way pickup selector switch uh, two Alnico Classic pickups uh, the Alnico Classics are essentially an import version of the Gibson Fifty Seven Classic um, you know if if you're going to compare the Alnico Classics to a to a USA Gibson pickup Fifty Seven Classic is the closest one that uh, that you're probably going to find. Uh, you know they are made in China. I've seen some. I've seen them in some guitars. They sound great. I've seen them in some guitars. They sound terrible. Uh, a lot of them. They sound middle of the road. These are okay. You know there's there's worse electronics out there. I guess uh, the uh, Epiphone Gibson and Epiphone advertise this guitar as a solid Carina body. Wrong. Not true. They're lying to you. 
uh, if you look real closely on the seam or on the corner there uh, you can actually see a seam on the top where the uh, uh, there's a very very thin piece of veneer on top that meets you know what's essentially a mahogany body um, you know the mahogany you know that the, the is basically a mahogany body with a with a very thin uh, Karina veneer on the top and on the back and you can see that seam all the way around when you look real closely uh, again on both sides you know that and that frustrates me to no end uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later on uh, you know this is I believe that I believe this is a maple neck actually uh, with a rosewood fretboard and uh, you know of course you know gold hardware of course uh, and a set of Grover deluxe uh, Cluson style tuners you know again for that that vintage uh, you know that vintage late 50s look uh, it's also got a you know more of a 50 style neck on it uh, not not a great it's a you know 50 style 50s necks are always you know, you're generally gonna be fatter than 60s necks uh, these are not hand sanded like the like the all the Gibson necks are so these are, you know production uh, is gonna be uh, a little bit closer from one guitar to the next you pretty much know what you're gonna get you know it is a little bit fatter um, but uh, it's not a great big telephone pole uh, baseball bat type of neck either so you know it, it is still comfortable to play if you're if you're a real real big fan of thin necks might not be might not be for you anyway um, <clears throat> but uh, I'm uh, I'm going to uh, you know plugged into the Marshall here uh, I'm going to uh, play both pickups uh, clean and, uh, and again on distortion so you can hear them uh, both ways and uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about pros and cons of this guitar and uh, you know final thoughts so things about this guitar let me start with let's we'll start with cons first con is the body uh, Gibson please stop lying to your customers please stop insulting our intelligence this is not Karina 
I've looked it up. You guys advertise this as a solid Karina body. It's not. It's a mahogany body, at eastern mahogany at best, with a real thin maple, uh, real thin Karina veneer on it. Uh, you know, to tell, to try to sell us, sell us this guitar as an actual solid piece of Karina, it just ain't true. Uh, please stop, stop, stop with your, you know, gimmicky false marketing techniques. Please. Uh, <clears throat> all right, and and rant. Um, you know the uh, um, so uh, th that's that's probably my number one pet peeve on this guitar. Uh, I will say, you know, as far as nailing the look of uh, you know, uh, as far as the look of the uh, the '58 Flying V and the reissue look, they 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 did nail that. They nailed it very very well. Uh, you know, this guitar is really not built all that bad. You know, it's not built bad at all to tell you the truth. Uh, you know, the electronics are, you know, I think. I think they sound really good on a really good through a clean tone. Uh, the neck pickup, especially. Uh, the problem is, you know, not too many guitar, not not too many people are going to pick this guitar up and want to play it through a clean, clean sounding amp. Most people are going to want to play this through a distorted sounding amp. Um, you know, and the, the, these pickups on distortion, I I think are really really okay at best. So you know, at, you know, or at least okay. You know, they're, they they get the job done, but um, they could certainly sound better. Um, you know, the, uh, the, <clears throat> that, uh, rubber tread thing there, you know, it does help to keep the guitar from falling, you know, from sliding off. Um, uh, it's not, you know, it's not foolproof. Uh, you know, I either, I often find my times, find myself wanting, you know, to set my arm way up high where I don't want to be playing, um, you know, or down low. And then again, it's either this arm's trying to slide forward or the whole guitar's trying to slide, trying to trying to slide back uh it is definitely easier to play than than that that guitar sitting down but uh, you know it's certainly a lot more a lot more comfortable to play standing up um uh, you know i'm uh fortunately i don't play too many yet uh, play too many gigs these days most of my guitar playing is done sitting down so you know uh you know for me and my purpose is definitely definitely a con there um uh, the uh you know the final final thought on this guitar uh, these tuners, these Grover uh, Grover Deluxe Cluson style tuners, these tuners suck. Uh, I mean, they absolutely suck. I I've always hated Cluson tuners because they don't stay in tune very well at all. Um, you know, I mean, again, they they got the right look on there, and they do. Uh, you know, they look like something that was. You know, they look like they would go on a guitar that was built in 1958. You know, but the fact of the matter is, for practicality purposes these days, they just don't stay in tune very well. Um, you know, Grover, you know, the Grover Tulip Tuners, the Deluxe, tu you know, the modern Tulip Tuners, in my opinion, um, would have been a much better choice. And, uh, and I think, the, and those tuners, I know for a fact, stay in tune a lot better. So, uh, overall, you know, uh, you know, this, I'd give this guitar a six and a half, maybe a seven out of 10. Um, you know, it would be higher if it weren't for, you know, for, for Gibson, uh, insulting our intelligence, you know, um, you know, so keep that in mind. But uh, um, there, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, they actually don't make these guitars anymore. When I was at Guitar Center, we sold these new for four ninety nine, um, and uh, you know, again, you can't find them new anymore. At least I couldn't find them new anymore. Um, and uh, I checked eBay, and there were several used ones out there that were starting. You know, the lowest lowest one I saw was selling for about three fifty, uh, and they went all the way up to. I saw one that sold for six hundred dollars. You know, so I was very, very surprised uh, that the value on these has gone up the way that they have, and uh, you know that's uh, that's definitely a, a big bonus for me because that means the value of mine went up too. So <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyway, but uh, yeah, you know, overall, you know, if you're uh, if you're if you're new to guitar and you're looking for your first pointy guitar or something like that, uh, you know, probably you know this this would be a good you know something cool to look at, you know, provided that. Um, you know you're prepared to uh you know to deal with you know the fact that it's not the most comfortable thing in the world to sit down and play um but uh yeah you know it's definitely a good place to start it's a good it, it does play well um you know it seems to be built pretty solid so um you know if you're into you know vintage looking you know fit, you know reissue type of gibsons uh you know but you're on a budget you know again you know check these out you know they they, they might be a good option for you as well so 
uh, you know, as always, please leave your comments and your questions in the uh, down below. I will uh, uh, answer them as as accurately and as rapidly as I possibly can. Uh, please also don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>